Make a horde of hippogriffs stay away, a gaggle of gelatinous cubes draw nearer, or just acquire some groupies for 10 days with antipathy sympathy. I'm John, a forever DM and adventure writer at dumbestdnd.com, and today we're looking at antipathy sympathy, an 8th level spell from the School of Enchantment in D&D 5e. Available to druids and wizards only, antipathy sympathy lets you affect one creature type, not just one creature, for up to 10 days, with no concentration. I'm not going to lie, I had to read this one several times to fully understand what was happening. I don't know if these long 8th level spells are wearing on me or what, but I had a severe misunderstanding initially. I think I've sorted it out though, but if you have any questions or clarifications, be sure to pop them into the comments below. I know you will anyway, but always appreciate it. Antipathy Sympathy takes an hour to cast, but if Bodax keep trying to steal your bagels, you could cast Antipathy on the bagel case itself, and for 10 days, they would have a tough time getting near your tasty baked goods. Similarly, if you're looking to get those lurking lizard folk to come out from hiding, casting Sympathy on an object could draw them out long enough for you to dispatch the entire lair. While on the surface, Antipathy Sympathy seems a bit strange, it feels like an incredible utility spell, especially because it lasts 10 days with no concentration. That said, it also has one of the weirdest resolutions to any spell in D&D. That's because depending on what target is selected, some rule that Antipathy Sympathy could be defeated simply by using a blanket to cover an object. More on that soon. If you're looking for history, skip on ahead, I'll meet you there. This spell attracts or repels creatures of your choice. So many options, and honestly so much time. You target something within range, either a huge or smaller object or creature or an area that is no larger than a 200 foot cube. This spell is super loose with restrictions. Target something, nice and vague, huge or smaller object or creature. Not even that, it could be an entire area. Entrance to a hideout, your primary encampment, a flaming pit of lava that recently sprung up. The options of areas, creatures or objects are pretty much endless. Then specify a kind of intelligent creature, such as red dragons, goblins, or vampires. You invest the target with an aura that either attracts or repels the specified creatures for the duration. So one whole creature type, but still a bit specific. You can't just say, dragon! You need to be more specific than that. My main question would be, can you say Sahuagin and it's all Sahuagin? Or would you need to say Sahuagin priestesses instead? As DM, I'd rule it as Sahuagin broadly, because while they may have different roles and abilities, they are all still Sahuagin at the end of the day. Open to being wrong on this, though, so let me know in the comments. Choose Antipathy or Sympathy as the aura's effect. Tougher than Rebecca Black trying to determine which seat to take in a car, you must now choose. Antipathy. The enchantment causes creatures of the kind you designated to feel an intense urge to leave the area and avoid the target. An intense urge. One of those goosebumps, skin crawling feelings where you want to get the heck out of there. The heebie jeebies, if you will. That's what you can do to one group of creatures you designate so they flee without knowing why. When such a creature can see the target or comes within 60 feet of it, the creature must succeed on a wisdom saving throw or become frightened. That 60 feet range is pretty baller because that's a lot of distance to put between you, your party, and any baddies lurking on the outskirts. Especially if you know exactly the type of creature you'll be encountering for the next 10 days. This is incredible. Do we all remember what the frightened condition means? No? Alright, well, say it with me. A frightened creature has disadvantage on ability checks and attack rolls while the source of its fear is within line of sight. And the creature can't willingly move closer to the source of its fear. Moving on. The creature remains frightened while it can see the target or is within 60 feet of it. Not just while it's in within 60 feet, but while it can see the target. Now if target is outside of 60 feet and closes their eyes or straight up bird boxes it and puts a blindfold on, do they stop being frightened? If they do and succeed on a wisdom saving throw, it seems that way. Think Raiders of the Lost Ark. Marion, don't look at it! Shut your eyes, Marion! Don't look at it no matter what happens! Harrison Ford would hate me for that. That's why I mentioned the spell being rendered useless by a blanket earlier. Simply covering the target with a tarp prevents a creature from feeling the effects. Caveat, if they are out of range. 60 feet still applies, so if you are within 60 feet, it doesn't matter if the object is covered. 
So while some might rule that a blanket could render the spell moot, I think it's only seeing half the rules. The object would still be emanating for the duration unless Dispel Magic was cast on the object itself once it was covered by the blanket. That out of the way, though, let's continue. While frightened by the target, the creature must use its movement to move to the nearest safe spot from which it can't see the target. If you line this up right, you could create a gauntlet of opportunity attacks with the rest of your party as the goblin attempts to flee outside of 60 feet and behind a rock. Especially if you've got a cavalier fighter in your party, they could opportunity attack against any of the creatures that flee. The specificity of must use its movement to move to the nearest safe spot from which it can't see the target also puts a bit of a damper on the theory of closing one's eyes. If the creature moves more than 60 feet from the target and can't see it, the creature is no longer frightened, but the creature becomes frightened again if it regains sight of the target or moves within 60 feet of it. Again, 60 feet or line sight. We'll cover ending the effect momentarily, but after sprinting 60 feet away, the creature will snap out of it. Sympathy. The enchantment causes the specified creatures to feel an intense urge to approach the target while within 60 feet of it or able to see it. When such a creature can see the target or comes within 60 feet of it, the creature must succeed on a wisdom saving throw or use its movement on each of its turns to enter the area or move within reach of the target. When the creature has done so, it can't willingly move away from the target. If the target damages or otherwise harms an affected creature, the affected creature can make a wisdom saving throw to end the effect as described below. So as expected, sympathy is the inverse of antipathy, which means that folks are drawn closer to you. This could be an instance where you are setting something down that they then have to go see, and they are continuously drawn to it for those 10 days if the spell has not ended. The key piece of this is it's not necessarily so much a way to line them up and attack, because if damaged, they have that chance at a wisdom saving throw to knock the spell off course. So in many cases, sympathy is much more likely to be a distraction tool or a way to get everyone into just one area to have an area of effect blast at some point. Wonder what would be a good fire-based area of effect spell. Hmm. Now on to ending the effect. I'm going to read through the whole thing first and then we'll summarize. Ending the effect. If an affected creature ends its turn while not within 60 feet of the target or able to see it, the creature makes a wisdom saving throw. On a successful save, the creature is no longer affected by the target and recognizes the feeling of repugnance or attraction as magical. In addition, a creature affected by the spell is allowed another wisdom saving throw every 24 hours while the spell persists. A creature that successfully saves against this effect is immune to it for one minute, after which time it can be affected again. So what does this mean? TLDR, once the affected creature is out of range, it makes a wisdom saving throw. This is more applicable for antipathy than sympathy since you're being pushed away. Failing means the creature is unable to check again for another 24 hours during the 10 day duration, which appears to mean that in sympathy's case, they're simply stuck next to the object like a glitched NPC for a full day. Succeeding on the save means the creature sees through the visage and is immune to the enchantment. Or one minute only. After that minute, if they are still in the area, they will need to save again, otherwise the effect starts back up. Antipathy, if they succeed but then just glance at the object again, they'll need to make a saving throw. The fact that when you make the save you're only safe for one minute makes this spell extremely powerful. Collecting manticores like moths to a flame feels way too easy, but again this is an 8th level spell, so it deserves the power. Let's take a look at the history of this spell now. Available in all editions of D&D, Antipathy Sympathy started out only available to Wu Jen with the introduction of Oriental Adventures in 1985 for first edition. Second edition split the two spells and got a bit more brutal, slapping a 1,000 gold cost on there, and for any creature that succeeded on a saving throw, and stayed in the area, they would lose one dex per round for the duration. Along with naming a creature type, the wizard also had to name an alignment to cast the effect on, narrowing scope quite a bit. Third edition kept the split for druids, sorcerers, and wizards, with antipathy as a spell with no gold cost, and sympathy as a whopping 1500 gold cost of crushed pearls. While these spells were split, 
each was able to be cast to offset or dispel the other. 5th edition connected the spells again, took away the gold cost, and ripped the spell right out of the sorcerer's hands. Still a shame that bards were never added here. Final thoughts, there is so much utility to this spell, but with a one hour cast time, you have to be extremely thoughtful about when and where you will cast it. If you're playing Ghosts of Saltmarsh and cast this prior to storming the Sahuagin Lair, it would be a walk in the park. I feel like Antipathy Sympathy doesn't get talked about much, and that's likely from how strange the settings need to be. But overall, a solid spell from the supportive druids and wizards. Let us know what we missed in the comments below, and until next time, roll high and stay ridiculous. Thanks for watching.